Hello friends, hope you are well, Techman Pat here. Today we're going to be installing the EK Quantum 3090 water block, specifically made for the Zotac Trinity card. Let's get started. Before we do, make sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. Okay, let's get started. First of all, we have to take apart the card. There are a bunch of screws on the back. Make sure you use a magnetic screwdriver and I'll explain why, because you gotta get the screws out. There's a whole bunch of them on the back that you need to remove sort of second or first, it doesn't really matter. But the secret source is in the screws on top. And those screws are hidden behind the fans and you have to get to them by sort of moving the fans around to a spot where you can fit your screwdriver in. And it's best to use a screwdriver that isn't really thick and the magnetic part comes in when taking those screws out of those places. Make sure you have them all and what you'll notice is you can quickly and easily take off the top bit. Now you'll be able to undo two cables but there will be a third one hidden right at the back of it. All you have to do is jiggle it very softly so you don't pull off the die and the actual heat sink which is very large should slowly slip off. Remember there's a lot of liquid paste in there or the heat paste and it will slowly come off. That means you can get the final plug there and you've taken off the cooler. Now some of these will get stuck so as you push through make sure to be very very gentle so you don't break off the actual cables. I had to use a bit of a pointy screwdriver in there to get it out because it just wouldn't come off by pulling the cables. Now, if you do pack this away for a little while, make sure to clean that paste off. It's just gonna get dirty and it's gonna mess up any box you put it into. Make sure to use 99% at least alcoholic rub, I suppose you'd call it. And then we can start screwing off the back plate. This back plate, unfortunately, will not be coming along with us to water cool this 3090 because, well, it's too long and it doesn't fit. And it has this metal bar on top that will actually block you from putting in your water cooling block. And so we have to take off a bunch of screws. And what you'll also notice is there'll be screws holding in the metal bracket, which you will have to take off. And this is a bit of a pain because, well, then the card is kind of flat. Nonetheless, as you do this, you'll notice that the back comes off easy because there are pads that are cooling the back sections. Now you can buy an extra back plate for about 76 Australian dollars. And I have ordered one, but it just has not arrived yet. As you can see, there are some pads on the back which you can take off. You make sure to take them off. The passive cooling will be enough to cool it. You don't necessarily need a back plate, but if you're gonna be extremely overclocking it, then you will. However, because this Zotac card has a 100% power limit set on it. That's probably why it's one of the cheapest ones. It does, well, basically it doesn't overclock very well. So what we're doing here is actually once you water cool it, you will actually be able to squeeze a little bit of performance out of it because while the power limit is set, the heat that it creates will be settled down and it will keep it nice and cool and quiet, of course. Those three fans, when they ramp up, are particularly loud and I prefer the quietness of a water-cooled system than that of an actual fan. Now make sure to clean off any of the items that are left in there from the actual heating pads from the old one. The heating pads that come with it are not nice quality. They're not good quality and they peel off and they kind of crumb up. They break off into little pieces. So you will need to sort of scrape off very gently from the chips, the old heat pads. So make sure to clean off any bits and pieces that are left. And what you'll get is an ability to just stick it on with no issue. Now, Sticking this on was a little bit of a pain because you have to stick it on and then take off both sides. Remember, when sticking these on, there are two plastic covers to take off. If you leave one of those plastic covers, you will damage and overheat your product. Now, the way you cover it is, as you can see here, in the sections around the black chips, you will also be covering two little spots that are around the sides and top bits. Make sure to cut them to size, not too big, but at least it can fit over the top. And again, I'm gonna mention it, make sure to take off the little blue plastic covers from each of those heat pads. As we continue, we're gonna be covering the power delivery chips. <laughs> I think that's what they are. In any case, they will need to be cooled very nicely and you can just stick it on very thinly by cutting it in half long ways and you can fit it right in between there. It'll be absolutely fine. Again, make sure to take off the blue tab. Very important, otherwise you will wreck your card. And obviously that is not covered by the warranty. Now, as we continue, you do not need to cover the red sticky uppy ones. They are not needed to be cooled, but remember the two little ones at the top and obviously the right-hand side. 
The whole water block will cover every single bit of it. And if you need to cut up some little bits, you can do so as long as they are touching and very close to each other and there's enough space for the screws to come past in that side there. Last few bits and pieces and we're gonna be done and we're gonna be able to put the actual paste back on the chip. Now the paste is provided with the EK package and from then on in, you kind of have to spread it out a little bit. One of the things with cooling a GPU, especially water cooling a GPU, is that it's not the same as a CPU in regards to the way you put the paste on. As you can see, the previous paste was spread out all the way around, and that is not a problem with this chip. Do clean it off with a ear tip if you can, but nonetheless, it won't damage your card if there's a little bit around it. The chip is sealed completely from the top, and the paste can't really damage it. Let's spread the paste thinly, but across the whole chip. Then we can bring the water block and turn it upside down, make sure you've got the right way up and just place the card on top of the water block, obviously on the back side. The back will be exposed, but don't worry, the passive cooling from just air will cool it fine. If you do need to get that back plate, do make sure that when you put the back plate on, you will remember to have to take off some of these screws as it actually kind of goes on top again. And I believe you also get longer screws with that pack. It does cost another 76 Australian dollars to do so. Again, it's not necessary. You're not necessarily overclocking this to high temperatures. There is one type of screw you need to use. And as you screw them in, be very, very gentle. Make sure that everything is lining up straight. The card is flush with the metal. If you have done something incorrectly, you might bow the actual card, which means if you push too hard, you may snap it. Don't put too much torque on the actual screws either because you don't want to break anything. The four screws that connect the actual chip that squeeze in, be very gentle and put all four in lightly. And then when you are done putting it all four very lightly, you can tighten them up a little bit. Then give it a little bit of a press on the board to make sure that everything's in place and then run your screwdriver through each of the actual screws to make sure everything is fairly tight, but do not over tighten. You don't necessarily need a torque screwdriver, but it is recommended to just be very, very gentle. After all, this is not a cheap device so you don't want to damage it now depending on your water flow you will be able to set which way the water goes in and out remember one is an outlet and one is an inlet it doesn't really matter which way as long as you're not connecting the inlet outlet into the same one you have in the back received a little cap on the right hand side you can see there in the corner that will block each valve and you'll put your barbs in the way you need to you can now screw on the actual bracket and that will mean you are technically done and that's it you have a little cable for RGB, make sure to plug that into your three point plug on the motherboard and make sure to put your ports in. It does come with a handy little wrench. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content and there will be more content around water cooling this build. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in another one. Bye.